Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about multiple sclerosis. So multiple sclerosis is the autoimmune demyelination of central nervous system in which our T lymphocytes mainly react to myelin antigens and there is a loss of myelin sheath in the central nervous system and there is also loss of oligodendrocytes. Oligodendrocytes are the cells which are responsible to synthesize myelin in the central nervous system. So this disease mainly affect brain and spinal cord whereas the peripheral nervous system myelin is synthesized by swan cell so peripheral nervous system is spare in this disease epidemiology of multiple sclerosis your risk to get multiple sclerosis is related to the distance from equator so the prevalence is higher in temperate climates further away from the equator most commonly in northern european ancestry and the multiple sclerosis affect female more often than men and the age group when symptoms usually develop is in 20s to 50s the etiology is not well known but there is a highly association of hla dr15 and dq6 and our t cell release cytokines which damage oligodendrocytes and myelin and there is also role of b lymphocytes which produce oligoclonal igg in the csf we also use this for testing the oligoclonal bands in the CSF finding and there is a sunlight and vitamin D association also. So the population who have low vitamin D are at higher risk to get multiple sclerosis. The clinical feature of multiple sclerosis include the dysfunction of optic nerve, brain stem or spinal cord and the two classical features are vision and weakness. So in vision part the patient usually present with monoocular optic neuritis. Optic neuritis is a inflammation of optic nerve. Optic nerve is a highly myelinated nerve. So this is a classical target for the immune system. And the patient also present with reduced monocular visual acuity, central or paracentral scotoma, sometime pain around the eye, papillitis, or may present with intraocular ophthalmoplasia or double vision. And in the weakness, patient present with corticospinal tract demyelination or trigeminal neuralgia. In trigeminal neuralgia, patient usually have sudden facial pain. Some patient also present with numbness, reduced temperature sensation, unsteady gait or sometimes sensory ataxia. And in the severe cases, patient also present with partial transverse myelitis. And the other clinical features include vertigo, fatigue, pain, especially the chronic back pain or painful leg spasms, bladder dysfunctions like detrusor over activities or urge incontinence bowel dysfunction impotence is also common and patient have some classical sign like lermity sign in which patient feel a electrical shock sensation down the back while patient flex his neck and there is a uthop sign where symptom worse with the heat and there is a classical neurologic triad which include scanning speech intention tremor and nystagmus you can divide multiple sclerosis in subtype based on the pattern of the symptoms and the most common form is relapsing remitting. This account for around 80 to 90 percent cases at the symptom onset. If you look at the graph, this is how relapsing remitting present. Patient will have one episode that in between episode patient, patient can back to normal but not always. Some patient will also have some symptoms in between the episodes too. And the disease worse after each attack. The second subtype of multiple sclerosis is called secondary progressive. In these patients begin with relapsing remitting but then they gradually develop worsening course of the disease. Look at the graph again. This is how secondary progressive present. The patient may have similar attack to relapsing remitting in the starting but then the symptom worse over time. And this is called the secondary progressive. And the final third subtype of multiple sclerosis is primary progressive in which patient do not begin with the relapsing remitting episodes. They just begin with the steady worsening of the disease. The diagnosis of multiple sclerosis is mainly based on the clinical feature and MRI finding. The first best test is always MRI. MRI will show you oval shape plaque. We also call them white lesions and you can differentiate these white lesions on the basis of contrast. The new lesions look like white and the olds look dark. You can also see Downson's fingers the plaque extending from the corpus callosum and sometime if the MRI is non diagnostic then you can go for visual evoke potential or CSF finding in, in which you can find oligoclonal bands.
For the treatment of multiple sclerosis, we use IV steroids, mainly 5 mg daily for 5 days. And for the long term, we use disease modifying treatments. The first lines are interferon beta 1b and glitriomir acetate. The second lines are fingolimod, which are licensed in USA and Europe. And the third line is natalizumab. The prognosis of multiple sclerosis mainly depend on the adverse and favorable factors. Some of the adverse and favorable factors are here in this table. The mean survival is 30 years after the onset of diagnosis in 80% of cases. Most deaths are related to advanced chronic disability such as pneumonia and sepsis. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.